Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. And in this video, I'm going to help you use Flopzilla Pro to find good flop bluffing opportunities. So I had a one-on-one -on -one session with a student earlier, and this is his database right here. You can see we filtered for raised first in, and he was in position on the flop because we're basically working from easiest to more difficult, right? The easiest spots to bluff are when you're in position um, against one of the probably the blind callers, and that's what we have here. Found two different hands where you can see on the action right here, he decided to check instead of c-bet in these two opportunities. So we whipped out Flopzilla Pro, and I'll go through with it uh, with you right now. What I recommend, this is a do as you consume video, so have Flopzilla Pro open and just click along with me because if you're clicking and following in my footsteps, getting the exact same numbers that I get with the program, you're gonna be learning Flopzilla Pro that much better. So first off, we want a multiplayer mode, so click on that right there two little icons. Now we have the first player's range, which I always make it the hero's range. Now in these hands, you can see we were in the cutoff for them. My um, my student's open raising range is roughly 20% in the cutoff. So double click or just build this range right now for yourself. So this is the range that I have saved, 20% range. You could see my uh, student opened with king-queen offsuit, bam, that's in here, and a seven offsuit, ah, we have that one missing. So I'm just gonna go ahead and tack on that hand and better into his raising range. So we have 23% for his range. Let's open up a caller's range right here. Now for these three, I'm just gonna make it very simple, a 30% calling range. You can see probably in a lot of games that you play, your opponents are often going to be calling with this kind of range right here. I mean, we could add in the suited king six and worse. We could even put in some other suited connectors. But for now, I just want to keep it simple. Go with the standard 30% range that I have saved. And if you need, while you're building these ranges in Flopzilla Pro for yourself, go ahead and pause the video and enter in this exact hand. You want to get 396 combos at 29.9%. So the first thing, when I'm using Flopzilla, the first thing I do is I take a look at the equities of range versus range before any board cards are entered. You can see with our tighter 23% range versus his wider 30% calling range, and that obviously misses out the or does not include the best three betting hands, you can see we have 55% equity. He's got 45%. We have a 10% equity edge. And this is one of the great things about targeting fishy players. They call with such a weak and wide range. They're just giving you that mathematical advantage preflop, which in the long run, it's almost impossible that, impossible for them to get beyond that edge. Now, let me show how you can use Flopzilla Pro to figure out exactly why we have that mathematical edge. What you want to do is go into the group mode. So click this on right here. You can see when you do that, we already have the group uh, pie chart right here, but you can see these various filters pop up. We can use these filters to get a visual sense of how often each range hits various hand strengths on random flops. You can see right now, this range hits top pair or better and open ended straight draw or better 33.4% of the time, about one third of that pot there's that same percentage, 33.41 right down here. Let's break this up into some categories that I like to think about when I'm considering ranges. First off, I keep the dark blue for top pair or better. I use this uh, teal or aqua color for all of the weaker pairs right here. So pocket bear below third, pocket bear below top pair. You could see that that's 22.3% or 22.5% right here. And I also like to use the dark green for all the best draws, open-ended and better. So you could see this range hits um, uh, more than 50% of the time, something worthy of staying in the hand, depending on the kind of bets that you face, or as the see better, the kind of bets that you make right here. Sometimes what I like to do is I like to color code these red to really get a visual sense, whoa, we miss it completely 46% of the time. Well, let's go ahead and take that off for now. So we've got um, ace high, no made hand, and which includes these worst draws 44% of the time. Let's look at our opponent's range. We gotta do the same thing, so choose the same colors. Dark blue for top pair or better. The lighter aqua for the smaller pocket pairs, and then the dark green for the draws. So let's compare the two. First off, our wider, 
our opponent's wider three bet calling or uh, <laughs> 30% calling range misses 50% of the time. We miss only 44%. So that's part of the reason why our equity is so much better than theirs. We hit top pair or better, 26%. They hit it only 21%. Loving that, right? They hit the best draw, 7.6. We hit it, oh, just a little bit left, less, 6.8. But we hit those weaker pairs at 22.5%. They hit those at 21%. So you can see overall, that's exactly why we have such an equity edge. We miss the board less often and we hit stronger hands more often than they do. So that's always the first step. When you enter two ranges, take a look at that kind of stuff to help you familiarize yourself with uh, the equities and why the equities shake out the way they do. Now let's take a look at this first hand. Our opponent, I'm sorry, my student open raised king queen offsuit, 20% uh, range. Opponent called with this range right here. The flop comes down deuce of clubs, eight of hearts, five of diamonds. So on this flop right here, you could see my student's equity went down just a little bit to 54%, but it's still greater than 50%. Things are not looking too bad right now. Let's go back to my student's range. Now, for whatever reason, an aspect of Flopzilla Pro, once you enter a board, all of the uh, filters reset to blue. So let's go ahead and clear them all right now. For hero, dark blue for top pair or better. Remember that teal color for all the weaker pairs? even bottom pair here and then the dark green for the best draws which on this board really just the open ender you can't have a flush draw on a rainbow board right so this is how hero hits this board we actually miss 66 percent of the time two-thirds of the time we completely whiff have just an ace high hand on this board or king high or queen high whatever the case may be let's take a look at our opponents we're after to do the same thing right here clear the filters dark blue for top pair or better, teal, weaker pairs, and then the dark green for the best draws, the open enders. So you can see at this point, he also misses 68% of the time. Yeah, so we're basically whiffing about the same, 66 versus 68% of the time. So you might say to yourself, wow, we're missing just as often as we are, or as he is, we shouldn't see bet here. But no, no, no. Just because your range misses on this board doesn't mean you shouldn't be betting. We've got to think about our opponent and what he could be folding. If he only continues with top pair or better, the best draws, and then even all the way down to bottom pair, if he only continues with those, he's folding 68% of the time. Two out of every three times we see this flop against him, he's folding. We have to see bet right here. I told my student this is not a good check at all. He checked down through the rest of the streets, but we're not going to look at the turn and river cards. We're only concerned in this video but with the flop, and he missed an absolutely perfect seabed bluffing opportunity. What's the worst that can happen? The worst that can happen is the villain check raises. Well, given that he has such a wide pre-flop range, he could potentially be a fish. Fish only check raise with like sets or better. He doesn't have any two pairs in his hand, so he would check raise with a set of eights, a set of fives, a set of deuces, super easy c-bet bluff, and then fold. The second worst thing that can happen, what if he checks and then calls us? Well, it's not the end of the world. We could get a king. We could get a queen on the Turner River, hitting a top pair hand, turning our bluff into a value opportunity, right? So it's really not a bad spot. Actually, it's a great spot to be c-bet bluffing this opponent. Let's go ahead and clear this board right here. Let's take a look next at the queen 10 deuce board. Everything remains the same. We opened in the cutoff. And remember, we had a seven offsuit in this hand. They defended 30% out of the big blind. No need to change this. No need to reanalyze these numbers or anything. Let's just enter the new board. Queen of hearts, 10 of diamonds, deuce of clubs. Oh, interesting. Let's take a look at hero's range first. Now, hero in this instance missed 42% of the time which is great, right? Last time we missed 66, now we're missing 42. Let me ask you a quick question. Here's a quiz. Why are we missing less frequently here? Well, it's because our range is comprised of a ton of Broadway hands, all the suited Broadways, the best off suit Broadways, and that flop has two Broadways on it. So of course we're gonna connect with it very well with lovely top pairs, decent second pairs, and a good amount of draws on this board as well. Let's take a look at our opponent. Ah, oh, they miss 49% almost half of the time. 
Once again, now, this player has tons of Broadways in his range, so he is going to connect decently well with the two Broadway board. But look at all these other non-Broadway hands, all these under pairs, all these suited and off-suit aces that just didn't hit any kind of draw other than an over-card draw and a backdoor draw, right? So at this point, I really love the idea. Just looking at the way we've filtered it now, he's missing 49%. I love the idea of a C-bet. But I took this one step further with my student, and I asked him, actually, let's look at this opponent. What do you think he is actually going to call with once he checks and then you make the C-bet? So that first look was just to see how it interacts with the board. Let's actually think about our opponent's probable decisions. So using the blue filter right here, well, we think he'll definitely continue with his straights, but there aren't any, right? This is not possible to hit a straight. Sets, yep, we got two combos, the pocket tens and the deuces. Those two pairs, will he continue? Of course, two pair hands. He doesn't have any over pairs in his range. Oh, will he continue with top pairs? Well, most players, even if they're out of position, even if they're relatively tight, even with that queen eight suited, they're gonna continue. And the queen jack off suit, right? Pocket pair less than top card. So pocket jacks, they're gonna hate folding with just the queen over card. They could potentially find a fold on an ace over card, right? But on that queen, everybody wants to believe that the open raiser has just a random ace or an ace king and their pocket jacks is currently ahead. So they're gonna call on the flop. Those mid pairs, well, if we take a look at all those mid pairs, if the opponent is fishy, yeah, they'll probably call with all those hoping that you just hold ace king or pocket sevens, nine eight, and you're totally bluffing right now. I think most, not most, but quite a lot of fishy players who call pre-flop with a 30% range, they're going to call those mid pair hands. Now, quite possibly all those under pairs could be folding and my student felt the same way. So we did not include those in, but we do think, or he thought his opponent could call with the open enders and with those gut shots as well, right there on that kind of dry board. Maybe if it was a 10 of clubs and he just had a gut shot, he wouldn't call, but on the rainbow board, he's calling with the gut shots now. So this is even better. When you give it a little bit more thought and think about exactly what your opponent will continue with, oh, let's actually make these green just so we can visualize the difference between their hitting range and their drawing range. Well, this opponent, when they hit mid pair or better, 20, uh, 30%, they hit the draws 14% of the time. That means they're whiffing 56% of the time. Folding more than half the time, this is absolutely a bluff C betting opportunity. So in this one quick session with my student, we found that he missed two great C bet bluffing opportunities based on the opponent's range and how well or not well it, in it interacted with the flop. All right, thank you so much for watching the video. Now I do wanna give you an action step. You can uh, filter in your database for opportunity to see bets basically what we filtered for here find the spots where you did not uh see bet and then analyze them assign yourself a range assign him a range uh uh analyze the equities analyze how well each range interacts with the board enter that board in and determine whether or not you missed a great see bet bluffing opportunity and if so Take a note of those mistakes. Take a note of the types of boards that are great to see bet on because some are better than others. And then utilize those notes the next time you play to make more profitable see bet bluffs on the flop. If you liked what you learned in this video, please give it a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down below. And lastly, if you liked what you learned and you want to learn more about how to use Flopzilla Pro to improve your skills, you have to get my new Flopzilla Pro course over two and a half hours of training seven different videos 18 page pdf this is exactly what you need to get the most out of flopzilla pro and turn yourself into the player that you want to be just go to smartpokerstudy.com slash flopzilla pro course i'll see you there